All right, welcome everybody to Victor Valley Phlebotomy Training and Phlebotomy Solutions video presentation, Phlebotomy and the Infection Cycle. What you need to know as a phlebotomist. All right, so let's talk about some terminology words used in the infection cycle in phlebotomy. Of course, the first one is droplet infection, and this occurs when infection agents are spread through respiratory droplets, such as when a person coughs or sneezes nearby. It's important to wear a mask and maintain proper hygiene to reduce the risk when dealing with patients. Now the incubation period. Now this refers to a period between exposure to an infectious agent and the appearance of symptoms. Understanding this helps us identify potential transmission timelines. Then of course we have susceptibility. Now a susceptible person is one who is at risk of being infected after due to a weakened immunity system or lack of prior immunity. This happens with the elderly patients or someone who's already sick with a specific disease or even newborn children with underdeveloped immune systems. And then we have also direct contact. Now this is when transmission occurs through physical touch such as when touching an infected person's wound or bodily fluids without protection. Now this next one is indirect contact. Now this happens when a person is infected by touching contaminated surfaces like a doorknob or equipment or even silverware and then touching their face for an open wound. Now proper disinfection is critical to prevent this. All right, let's talk about now the infection cycle, which includes six essential leaks and breaking any one of these links can stop the spread of infection. Now the pathogenic microorganism, now this is a, the germ such as bacteria or viruses that cause the infection. For phlebotomists, it's critical to recognize these as potential risks. Now we come to the reservoir and this is where the pathogen lives and multiplies, such as in humans, animals, or on, or on contaminated surfaces. Now the means of escape, and this is how the pathogen leaves the reservoir, often through bodily fluids like blood, saliva, or respiratory droplets. Now mode of transmission, this is how the pathogen spreads, either through direct contact, indirect contact, or airborne transmissions, as we just saw on the other slide. Now means of entry, this is how the pathogen enters the next host, such as through broken skin, mucous membranes, or even needle stick injuries. Then we come to host susceptibility. This depends on the health and immune system of the host. A healthy person may resist infection while someone immunocompromised may be more susceptible. Now again, this goes back to the elderly who might already be sick or have a weak immune system or even newborn children. And phlebotomists play a key role in breaking this cycle by pro practicing proper hand hygiene using PPE and following infection control protocols. All right, let's talk about now growth requirements for microorganisms. Number one, oxygen. Some microorganisms like aerobic bacteria need oxygen to survive and grow, while others called anaerobic bacteria thrive in its absence. Moisture. Microorganisms require a moist environment to multiply. This is why proper drying and disinfection are critical to preventing contamination. Nutrition. Just like all living organisms, microorganisms need nutrients such as sugars and proteins to grow and reproduce. Temperature. Most pathogens grow best at body temperature, which is around 37 Celsius or 98.6 Fahrenheit, making the human body an ideal host. Darkness. Many microorganisms thrive in dark environments, which is why keeping areas clean and well lit can help prevent their growth. Proper pH balance. Microorganisms need an appropriate pH level to survive. For example, some thrive in acidic conditions, while others prefer neutral or alkaline environments. So understanding these requirements helps us create strategies to prevent infection by disrupting the ideal conditions for growth. Now let's talk about some different infection agents to be aware of. Infection agents are microorganisms that can cause disease and there are four main types. One is bacteria. These are single celled organisms that can be helpful or harmful. Harmful bacteria like E. coli can cause infections and illnesses. Proper sterilization of equipment is crucial to prevent bacterial transmission. Viruses. Now these are smaller than bacteria and need, to need a host to reproduce. 
Examples include the flu virus and HIV. They are often transmitted through blood, respiratory droplets, or contact with contaminated surfaces. Next is fungi. These are organisms like molds and yeast, such as penicillium. While some fungi are beneficial, others can cause infections, particularly in individuals with weakened immune systems. Parasites. These organisms live on or inside a host, such as amoebas. Parasites can be transmitted through contaminated water, food, or contact with in infected individuals. Routes of exposure include ingestion, injection, and inhalation, which emphasizes the need for strict infection control protocols in a phlebotomy setting. Now let's talk about some standard universal precautions in phlebotomy that are essential practices in healthcare to prevent the spread of infection. Now, treat all blood and body fluids as potential infections. Assume that every patient's bodily fluids could carry infectious agents, even if, they are no, even if there are no visible symptoms. Use personal protection equipment, PPE. Always wear gloves, masks, gowns, or goggles as needed to protect yourself from exposure to blood-borne pathogens. And do not forget the golden rule. If it is wet and sticky and not yours, do not touch it without gloves. This simple reminder emphasizes the importance of never handling bodily fluids or potential contaminated materials without proper protection. By consistently applying these precautions, you protect yourself, your patients, and others in healthcare environments. Now let's talk about some control requirements for microorganisms. To control the spread and growth of microorganisms, it's important to focus on these key requirements. Good physical health. Maintaining a strong immune system through healthy habits helps the body resist infections. Good emotional state. Stress can weaken the immune system, making it easier for microorganisms to take hold. Managing emotions is key to overall health. Proper exercise. Regular physical activity boosts circulation and supports immune function, reducing vulnerability to infections. Good nutrition. A balanced diet provides essential nutrients to strengthen the immune response against harmful microorganisms. Proper hygiene. Regular hand washing, sanitizing equipment, and maintaining cleanliness are critical to preventing the spread of germs. Reduce stress. Lowering stress levels through relaxation and self-care can enhance the body's ability to fight infections. Limit direct and indirect contact. Avoid unnecessary contact with potential contaminated surfaces or individuals to minimize exposure. Use standard precautions. Always wear PPE and follow infection control guidelines to protect yourself and others. And finally, infection control. Implement measures like disinfection, sterilization, and proper waste disposal to prevent the growth and transmission of microorganisms. By addressing these factors, we can create a safer and healthier environment in medical and phlebotomy settings. Now let's answer this question. How are infectious agents transmitted? Now infectious agents are transmitted in various ways, often due to improper practices. Here are the key methods. Improper hand washing. Failing to wash hands correctly or frequently allows pathogens to spread from one person to another or to surfaces. Contaminated instruments. Reusing or improperly sterilizing instruments can introduce pathogens into the bloodstream. Body fluids. Direct contact with blood, saliva, or other bodily fluids from an infected person increases the risk of transmission. Needle sticks. Accidental needle stick injuries are a significant risk for healthcare workers as they can expose individuals to blood-borne pathogens like HIV or hepatitis. By emphasizing proper hand hygiene, instrument sterilization, PPE use, and safe needle handling, we can significantly reduce the risk of transmission in healthcare settings. Now here's a reminder. Please subscribe, like, share, and join our membership to get access to all of our phlebotomy materials, including textbooks, 2025 study guides, and practice exams. Plus, you'll have full access to our student video collection. Thank you for listening and watching Phlebotomy Solutions and Victor Valley Phlebotomy Training video presentation.